Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. One of our worst enemies in the winter is cold. You know how it feels to step out of the house when it's 10 or 15 degrees below zero. (laughs) Imagine trying to get around in 30 or 40 below zero. (laughs) I'll stop shivering. It's really not so bad if you're dressed for it and you eat the proper food that'll build up your body heat. The bitter cold is a clever enemy. It sneaks up on you and captures you, unless you're on guard. Probably one of the coldest places around Knotty Pine is the Savage Mountains to the north. Man alive, but those rock piles are cold. It's so cold up there, we've nicknamed them the Refrigerator Mountains. And that's where our story takes us today. Decision for Death. The wind never stops blowing in the Savage Mountains. In fact, in the wintertime, it cuts through you like a knife. Right now, a party of mountain climbers are up in the mountains. Eric, we we got to rest soon. I'm going to give out. Up ahead, there's a spot. Too dangerous here by this crevasse. Oh, Eric's right, Gee. Got to keep going. Keep up, men. Almost to a sheltered spot. We can break out one of the pack and, and eat a little. Hey, hey, we're beginning to move. This is a breaking out from under us. Drive your picks in, man. You all right, Merv? Yeah, yeah. Everything, except my leg. Broken? Feels like it. How's the equipment? Oh, don't worry about that. Hey, where's Don and Jim? Well, there are only six of us here. Uh, I saw them s- slip down there. Well, yeah, we'll see if they're okay. Jim! Don! You all right? <laughs> What's the thermometer say, Eric? 35 below, Keith. Oh, I'm afraid a night up here will kill us all. We'll probably get to 50 below tonight. Well, maybe that's the best way out for us. They say freezing to death isn't bad at all. We just sort of go to sleep painlessly. Yeah, maybe you're right, Mer. A rescue party would never find us in this crash. Don't give up hope, fellas. They know back in town that we came up here. They know the approximate time that we should be back. Yeah, I guess you're right. Only it's been hours now, and the cold's really beginning to get through my clothing. And we've run out of food, too. I wonder how Jim and Don are in a deep crevasse. They fell a lot further than we did. Maybe they're dead. Could be. They took an awful fall down there. We haven't heard a word from them. Maybe they're conserving their strength. Hope so. Would be terrible if they're down there all broken up and suffering from a lot of pain. Yeah, and we can't do a thing for them. Well, I know something we can do for ourselves and and for each other. Yeah, well, what's that? What can we do, huh? We can pray. That's right. Okay. I've got new hope now. Let's keep an optimistic attitude and look at this thing on the positive side. We'll ask God to send the rescuers. I wasn't paying attention to the volume. I thought maybe you'd turn deaf all of a sudden. We 
interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important news bulletin. A party of eight mountain climbers is trapped somewhere in the high reaches of the Savage Mountains. Officials of the village of Greenbow, located at the foot of the mountains, have released this information. A rescue party is now making its way up the Savage Mountains with the hope that they can find the trapped men before the bitter cold does its work. We'll keep you informed as to the progress the rescuers are making in their attempt to reach the men. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Man, alive! Those fellas up in the Savage Mountains are in a real spot. You can say that again, young feller. We don't call them Cold Stone Hills or Refrigerator Mountains for nothing. Not right. Why it's much colder up there than other places, I not know. But that is cold mountain range up there. There isn't a colder range of mountains anywhere in the country. It's a strange phenomenon, all right? Well, I'll say. There are a treacherous range of mountains, too. Why, more climbers have been killed trying to climb them than anywhere around. Yep, but folks never seem to learn. That mountain climbing challenge. Next fellow think he can make it all right. Yeah, Gray Wolf's right. Seems that the more dangerous the mountains and the higher the death rate of climbers, the more men there are that try to conquer the peaks. <laughs> That's the challenge of mountain climbing. It's a man against the elements proposition. Oh, be that as it may. I'm glad to stay right here by the radiator and forget about conquering mountains. Mirror, how do you think the rescue party is going to make it out up there? Oh, who can tell, Judge? It might even be that we'll have to get other men to try and rescue the rescuers. Uh, that's what I've been thinking. They've been going an awful long time. Hey, the rescue party's back. Yeah, we were just thinking about getting someone to come after you and the boys, Ricks. Well, you are too far wrong, Judge. We had a couple of close calls. So what about the eight men? Did you find them? Yes, we did. We found them all right, but we couldn't get to them unless we had wings. They fall into a crevasse? That's right, Judge. The biggest and deepest one I've ever seen in a long while. Yeah, it's too bad. You say it's impossible to get them out? Yes, it's impossible. Are they still alive? Yes. <laughs> All of them? Yes, as far as we could tell. They saw us, so at least they know we're trying. Well, Mayor, what do we do now? Where do we go from here? I'm not going to give up yet, Judge. I'm going to call the Rangers. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, fellas. We have to spend the night here. We're done for. Oh, it's cold. Oh, don't give up. We saw the rescue party up there, and they saw us. Sure, but what they, could they do? This crevasse is just as straight up as can be. And they were just as helpless as we are. Yeah, maybe. But you never know. i got to change position, fellas. Here, we'll give you a hand. Yeah, I'll take this side, Keith. Okay, let's move in. How easy does it, Eric? Right. Oh, okay, it's good. Oh, why don't you let us try and splint your leg, Merv? No, no. No, we've got nothing to tie the picks to my legs with. I'll I'll turn my shirt into strips. Oh, no, no. You're cold enough now without taking your outer clothes off. Anyway, the broken bones didn't pierce a blood vessel, so we can leave it the way it is. The way things look, it won't make any difference anyway. Well, as I was saying before about staying close to the fire, well, I've come to the conclusion that either I talk too much or too loud or both. <laughs> I don't think so, pal. Although sometimes I'm almost willing to believe that the walls have ear. <laughs> I almost think that true at times, too. Well, I guess we won't be as cold as those poor fellers strapped up in the Savage Mountains. Yeah, that's for sure, old-timer. Oh, it must be terrible to be cold. So very cold that you're only half alive. It's death by inches. First your hands and feet freeze, then your legs and arms... So on until death puts an end to your suffering. Death from freezing isn't painful itself, 
It's the part leading to the death. It's enough to drive a man out of his mind. Ah, uh, their helicopter waiting for us. Yep. There's Andy Gibbons waiting with the whirly bird. Okay, Gray Wolf. Let's get the gear out of the trunk. Right. Good, pal. We'll wait for you at the copter. There, village of Greenbow. Ah, it hasn't taken long, has it? Looks like you ought to be able to set the copter down in the village square, Andy. Yes, yeah, so there's plenty of room there. Look at the people watching us come in. Maybe they thought we was coming on horseback. Here we go for the landing. Okay. Just be sure you don't land on top of that statue down there. They wouldn't like one of the town fathers to wear a whirly bird for a hat. Well, that's the whole story, as far as we can tell it to you, Bill. Mm -hmm. It's not a pleasant story, but that can't be helped. Where's the leader of the rescue party, Mayor? Why, he's uh, right over there with the crowd. I'll get it. Thank you. Hey, Judge, why the wry look on your face? Well, you were just thinking about how wonderful things are today. Huh? What do you mean? Well, take that there helicopter. I was just studying it. I wonder how many lives have been saved with that amazing collection of nuts and bolts. It save a lot of lives. Then there's a pretty good chance that the boys up in the mountains can be saved. That remained to be seen, Judge. That wonderful machine, but it's not able to do everything. Bill, this is Rex, leader of the rescue party. Oh, hello, Rex. Hello, Bill. Uh, Rex, how about taking a ride in the copter with us and showing us where the men are trapped? Sure, be glad to. When do we leave? Right now. I don't think they're going to try and get us out, fellas. I guess you're right, Mary. Something would have happened by now. Man, it's cold. You said it. This is the end. What's the matter, Mary? My ears must be frozen. I think I, I hear a plane. Uh, that's the wind playing on the ice ridges. No. No, it isn't. Listen. It is a plane. It sounds like it's coming right over us. But, but what good's a plane going to do us? Smith, Eric, look up there. It's, it's a helicopter. Maybe there's a chance to get out. Maybe God's going to help us. Boy, they're really down there in that crevasse. Wow, what a fall they took. You can say that again, Sonny. That's a big hole down there. What do you think, Bill? I'm not sure yet, Gray Wolf. Those fellas are in an awful jam. Well, do you think there's a chance to get them out? Oh, perhaps. Right now, let's break out the emergency rations and the power megaphone. We gotta get some food to those men. Why do they just keep hanging up there? You men down there! You men down there! Don't give up hope! We're going to try and get you out! We're going to try and get you out! Keep yourselves as warm as you can. We're going to drop high caloric food to you. Then we'll leave for a while. But don't give up hope. We're going to try and get you out. Watch for the food parcels. I, I don't feel so cold now, fellas. <laughs> Neither do I. Don't try to move, Merv. Eric and I and the other fellows will get the food particles. Here comes the first one. Hey, that was close. Here comes another. I got it. I've got this one. This high-energy food will give us plenty of body heat and keep us from freezing. Let's open one and pass it out to all the fellows. And we'll save the others just in case. There they go. I hope that fellow wasn't joking by telling us they're going to try and get us out. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Bill, uh, the relatives of the trap men are here. Can I give them words of hope? Not yet, Judge. Well, we've got to say something to them pretty soon. They can't be put off. I understand that, Mayor. Andy, do you think you can fly a small copter down into the crevasse far enough to lower a cable in a harness and winch the men up one at a time? Uh, I don't know, Bill. That'd be pretty risky. Well, can it be done? Well, sure, the idea is sound, but whether or not it would be safe to do it is another matter. The up and down drafts are pretty strong up there. Andy, can it be done, yes or no? Yes. If I go with you to work the winch and bring the man into the cabin, will you try it? Okay. My common sense tells me no, but I keep thinking of those trapped men. Let's go. You go ahead and warm up the copter. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Henry, Stumpy, get the village doctor and help him set up a place to take care of the men. Right. Gray Wolf, call the helicopter field and have them send up four small copters like Andy's and their best pilots. Okay, Bill. If they come before you get back, you want them to go get more trapped men? No. Wait until Andy and I return. Bill, can I give the relatives some kind of news now? Yes, Judge, you can. Tell them we're going to try and get one man out. If we succeed... They can be reasonably sure we'll get the others out. I'll tell them. And our prayers will go with you all the way up there and back. Thanks. Ask the Lord to keep the winds down so the helicopter doesn't get bashed to bits against the crevasse walls. Here they come again. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen next. What are they trying to do? They'll crash. They can't land in here. <laughs> They've stopped dropping. They're not going to try and land. Hey, here comes a cable with a harness on it. Hey, this is it, fellas. We're going to be rescued. Oh, uh, are you all right, Murph? <laughs> yeah, yeah, never mind me. Grab that, grab that harness when they swing it over here. I forgot about my leg for a minute. Hey, they're swinging the harness and the cable. Grab it when you can, Eric. I'll help Merv up so we can get into it. No, no you don't. You fellas go first. There'll be no argument. Your leg needs care, and you'll be first. One more swing, and I'll be able to grab the harness. Whoever would have thought we'd get on it. How are you coming along with the cable and harness, Bill? They've got it. I've let the cable out as far as it'll go. Can you hold the copter? Oh, I think so. The drafts are strong, but so far they haven't gotten out of hand. But don't dilly and dally around, though. I won't. Say, hey, the fellow they're putting the harness on must be injured. Oh, how badly? I don't know. It looks like he got a broken leg in the way they're handling him. Oh, I wish they'd hurry. The draft's getting out of hand? Uh, no, but I wouldn't push them too far. The copter's getting hard to handle. Well, he's all set now. Take her up slowly. If he doesn't swing too hard, hit the other wall, the crevasse. Right. I'm winching him in. As soon as I get him into the cabin, we can take off for the village full blast. guys are terrific. What a rescue. Oh, say, it's some rescue. You've given everybody a fresh supply of hope, young feller. That's right. Everybody glum until you and Andy come back with one of the trapped men. Yeah. The doc's working on his leg now. Then he'll take care of him for exposure and frostbite. Let's not get too excited yet, fellas. We got seven more men to go. Are the helicopters here? They sure are, Sonny. The boys brought along some winchmen, too. They're raring to get going. Okay. Give them the word to go. One copter at a time. After Andy's had a little rest, he and I'll join the parade. Here's number two. Easy with the stretcher, men. Glad you made it, Sonny. This fourth man, get him to doctor quick. He has bad frostbite. Number five coming up. Bill, you're bringing in number six. Bill, 
The copter with the seventh man hasn't showed up. Maybe it crashed. Henry was right. The copter did crash. Look, there are the two men. Are they all right? Yeah, as far as I can tell. We might as well go after one of them while we're here, huh? Uh, might as well. Although we might end up in the bottom of that crevasse, too. That's eight men, Bill. You fellas did a terrific job. Soon we go home. Yeah. And sit by the fire like we started out doing. Yep. <laughs> That's a first class idea. I make the motion that we adopt it. I second. And I third, fourth, and fifth it. That makes it unanimous. Let's go home. I hope that whirlybird ain't all tuckered out so as we can get there fast. Ah, oh, maybe it can make one more hop. But, uh, fellas, our job isn't finished. What do you mean? You'll find out. Let's go over and see the men brought in. How's the doc treating you fellas? Just fine, Ranger. We want to thank you for what you've done. Ah, oh, forget it. The fact that we got you out alive is thanks enough. How's your broken leg, mister? Okay. Doc said it fine. Say, where did you fellas put Jim and Don? Jim and Don? Who are they? They're part of our group. They fell into the crevasse, too? Why, yes. Well, we took eight men out. Yes, pal, but... Two of the men were from the crashed helicopter. That's why we can't go home. Oh, why, then they're still in the crevasse. But we didn't see them from the helicopters. They fell into a small crevasse near the bottom of the larger one. We never did hear from them. Come on, fellas. We got to go after them. Wait. Yeah? I don't think it's any use, Ranger. They're dead by now. <laughs> Let's make sure we've got all the gear we need, fellas. Make sure the rope is good. We took over all gear. It in top shape. Yes. We even went over it twice. Fine. Andy's going to take us up close to the crevasse and set us down. We'll go on from there. Uh, Mr. Jefferson? Uh, yes, sir? I'm Burton Smith, Jim Smith's father. He's one of the boys still missing. Well, how do you do, Mr. Smith? And this is Donald Porter, Sr. He's the father of the other lad still up there. How do you do, sir? Hello. Mr. Jefferson, we understand that you're going back up there after our two boys. Yes, sir, that's right. We're just about ready to leave. We, well, we don't want you to try and rescue him. You don't? Why not? There's been enough life risking done already, sir. We've talked to the other men in the party, and they, they hadn't heard from them at all, not in that crevasse. We feel that you and your men in the helicopter pilots have risked your lives enough. You've done all that could be asked, even more. You realize that your decision is a decision for death, don't you? We fully realize the weight of our decision, Mr. Jefferson. They're our sons. Yes, yes, I know. You feel that they're dead already? Yes. We talked it over with our wives, and we agreed the reasonable thing to do is nothing more. We can't ask you men to take any more risks. Mr. Smith, we appreciate your decision, and I know it's taken courage to make it. More courage than I've ever seen in all my life. But the Ranger Code will not allow us to accept your decision. I want to find your sons and know whether they're dead or alive. I see. But isn't there any way that we can dissuade you from going up again? No, Mr. Smith. We'd never leave a job half done. Let's go, men. The helicopter's waiting. <laughs> Drive those stakes well, fellas. A lot of weight is going to hang on them. I will drive them all the way to China. They won't give. I'll say they won't. This ice is like concrete, only twice as hard. I'll give this one another lick for good measure. 
Ray Wolf, let's rig the bosun's chair and I'll get started down. Right. Henry, bring the walkie talkie. Right. Bosun's chair ready now. All right. Here I go over the side. Watch the rope so they don't foul. It's a good thing we brought plenty of rope. Yeah, I'll say so. Well, that crevasse is a lot deeper than a fellow would think. Henry, can you hear me? Hey, it's Bill. Did you find him? I'm right beside him. Are they still alive? I think so. Although they're badly frostbitten. We're sending down the first basket stretcher. Good boy. We gotta work fast. And he'll be back to pick us up in half an hour. We'll start the second stretcher down right after we get this one up. Hey, I can see the helicopter coming now. How far is Bill up the wall? About halfway. He'll make it on it. Hey! What's the matter? Bill's stuck. He's not able to move. Boston chair up or down. Hey, man, alive. The rope's jammed in the block and tackle with ice. Henry, hurry. That's no use. That ice is like rock. Now what are we going to do? Bill's dangling like a worm on a hook and he can't go up or down. Henry, you cut line while you and I hold Stumpy. Then all of us pull Bill up. On this ice, why a fly couldn't stand on it. I tie myself to the stick. So we not all go over. Okay, but let's do it quick. Uh, I tie myself quickly. Uh, ready now. Henry, cut rope. Are you sure you fellas can hold Bill? Why, sure. Quit palavering and cut the rope. Okay, here goes. Henry, snap rope around stick so it holds when we pull. Okay, I'll pull too. You're doing great. Oh, Henry. That's it. I can see his head. Just a little more. Pull. Pull me up. Pull. That's good. Now pull me away from the edge. Uh-huh. We made it just in time. Here comes the helicopter. Oh, after Andy takes the two men back, and we'll get off this pile of ice. What's the doctor's verdict, Mr. Smith? Well, it's good news. They'll live. Although he'll have to remove some frostbit toes and fingers. But they'll be well again, thanks to you and your men. Uh, that's all right. We're glad that we got to them in time. It took a lot of courage to do what you men did. A lot of courage. Not nearly as much as your decision took, Mr. Smith. As parents, it wasn't easy for you to make a decision for death. It takes an awful lot of courage for a parent to say, leave my son up there to die because you've risked your life enough trying to save him. That's real courage in full measure. Well... See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill!